Hey gang, welcome back to my channel if you've been here before and if this is your first time here, thank you so much for watching and welcome. I'm so happy that you stumbled upon me because the videos on this channel are able to help heal more than 90% of any health, wellness, and body image challenge. So please do check out the other videos on this channel. Please share the channel because anyone can use this info and it's free. Anyways, today, is a little bit of a spicy video. I have had these conversations recently with my girlfriends and some clients and I just wanted to let the cat out of the bag and tell you about how you can hack your mind to have multiple orgasms. Mm -hmm. So you can enjoy being the sexual human being that you were born to be. So despite what you might think, orgasms don't start anywhere near the clitoris. Okay, this is for you too, guys. There's nothing worse than when you're starting to get a little cozy with a guy and they just go straight there as if it's like a lawnmower pull start kind of thing. No. Everything starts up here in your mind. That is not to say that the clitoris needs to be ignored because definitely not. It is one of the absolute best pleasure centers in a female's body. However, all of your sexual desire feelings, whether male or female, despite what your body feels, starts in the brain. And this is especially when it comes to having multiple orgasms for males too. Dudes, it is possible for you to have multiple orgasms too. You're not gonna ejaculate with every single one either. That is also a misconception. There is a little place in our brains called the sensory cortex. Primary somatosensory cortex is responsible for processing somatic sensations or sensations from the body that include touch, proprioception or the position of the body in space, nociception or pain, and temperature. When we are becoming aroused by clitoral stimulation, nipple stimulation, and other erogenous zones, the sensory cortex lights up, but it lights up the exact same way when we even just think about sexual pleasure, sexual fantasies we have, or even past sexual experiences that we've had. The brain, nervous system, and urethral clitoral network are in a constant feedback loop. The brain gets turned on by sexual stimuli. It then sends a signal to the female clitoris that you're feeling sexual pleasure, and the body then responds by becoming sexually aroused. This physiological response in the body then sends a positively correlated response back up to the brain that we are ready to go. It's almost like your brain and your clitoris are having a conversation just between themselves. Did we just become best friends? Yep. Any human being with a clitoris is able to have multiple orgasms, whether you have experienced it before or not, and whether you believe that you can or not, I assure you it is possible. The clitoris is actually way bigger than most people think it is. It contains over 8,000 nerve endings. The actual entire clitoral structure goes farther into the body than what you see on the outside, almost like the tip of an iceberg. The clitoris actually contains extended bulbs and wings that extend into the labia and then up into the abdomen. All of the yellow that you see there is the clitoris. The clitoris is actually the only organ designed entirely and solely for pleasure. So, Technically, we can have as much pleasure as we want. Men though, I'm sorry to inform you, do have what's called a refractory period following orgasm, so it's a little more tough for you guys, whereas women, we could just keep on going till the end of time. Party! If you have found that you are unable to have multiple orgasms or sometimes it's difficult for you to orgasm, that can be blamed on your brain. Our brains are super powerful and so it's the mind that turns out to be the culprit here. And there are different ways and many that we can subconsciously prevent ourselves from experiencing these orgasms. A lot of times we don't keep pushing for the pleasure because somehow we are holding ourselves back mentally. People raised as women 
are always raised to be very modest and often aren't told that their pleasure and sexual pleasure even matters. I know that when I was raised, even in the 80s, it was a very hush-hush faux pas, we don't want to talk about this, very private thing. And yet we're always told about the importance of giving our partners pleasure. We just don't prioritize female pleasure as a society as a whole. And that in turn can greatly affect how vulva owners feel about their pleasure. And you know what? I have spoken to many women about this topic, and many clitoris owners are actually apprehensive about receiving oral sex. They're worried that their partner might not want to do it, or that it's weird, or that it's gross. None of the above is true. Bears, fair gals, and guys. Research has actually shown that these mental narratives do come with physical consequences. In one study of 462 heterosexual women that was published in the Archives of Sexual Behavior showed that nearly all of those women reported faking it at least once in their lives. That's shocking. And only based on the concept that there was an underlying belief somewhere that the male's orgasm was more important. How fair is that? I mean, if we are having sex to have babies, we are the ones carrying this child for nine months. We are the ones going through the pregnancy and we're the ones going through the horrifying act of birth. I'm sorry, yes, it's beautiful. It scares the living bejesus out of me. <coughs> the more these women had internalized sexist beliefs, the more likely she was gonna fake it to please her partner. There is tons of evidence even elsewhere in scientific literature. A recent study in the Journal of Sex and Marital Therapy showed a positive correlation between positive body image and yes, orgasm frequency. Our brains are so powerful that some research suggests that many instances of pain in the vulva and vaginal area can actually be linked to high cases of depression and anxiety in women. Our genitals and our brains, pretty tight friends. These mental hangups lead to a perpetual loop of negative feedback that highly impacts our ability to even have an orgasm, never mind multiple ones. Even though physically we should still be and are still able to. If you tell yourself that you're not going to come again, or that your clitoris is too sensitive now, or that you feel your partner may be bored at this point with giving you pleasure, I'm sorry, in which case, what? you're definitely not gonna come again. We actually manifest this limitation through our negative thinking. So number one, break that cycle. And it always starts with positive thinking. You need to be telling yourself you are capable of having multiple orgasms, of having unlimited pleasure. As much as you want and most importantly, ladies, you deserve it. You need to tell yourself until you believe it that you deserve it. Why the heck wouldn't we? Another handy tip, masturbate. Not only is it really good for lubricating your joints, but it also gives you the opportunity to really explore your own body and try different things without having the pressure of a partner present. The more you masturbate and explore your own body, the better acquainted your body and your brain get with the sexual response cycle and orgasm. What better excuse could there be? Big secret, guys. Big secret. Listen up. I'm listening intently. There are so many ways to touch and stimulate a clitoris without even physically touching it straight up. You don't need to touch it directly. Once you orgasm once, you can try touching different areas around your clitoris or even other areas of your body to get that response going again. You could take a vibrator and run it along the outside of the vagina, on the labia, on the pubic bone mound above your vagina, or even just stimulate your nipples a little bit. Please do not be afraid or ashamed to try different things. Your partner is not responsible for your orgasm, you are. As much as we wanna blame them if it doesn't happen. So learn what you like and get confident in your body. Spoiler alert, vaginal intercourse very, very rarely results in orgasm for women. There are actually barely any touch sensitive nerves inside the vagina. You're probably not even gonna have one orgasm, let alone more than one solely with vaginal intercourse. Foreplay is beyond important for this. Uh, I burned, I burned, I burned, I burned. Ah!
<laughs> for a woman to have an orgasm that is at the top of the chart of enjoyment, the mind-blowing, top-of-the-chart kind of orgasm, because there are varying levels of orgasm for us, foreplay needs to take place. Please let the vagina be the last thing that you're touching on a woman. And I have seen couples have a lot of success by a woman simply asking her man if he wouldn't mind having a little go at listening and responding to her while she teaches him what to do. And dudes, if you're a guy that's gonna get offended when a woman tries to show you what makes her feel good, give your head a shake. We are all so different. I am sure you are very talented and it might not even have anything to do with the level of your talent, but it's important to be responsive to a woman when she asks you if you'd like to try something or if she can show you something that she's always wanted to try or if she could maybe show you something that she thinks would feel really good for her. Don't get offended. Just do it because you know what the good thing about sex is? It comes back around for you fellas. Be the guy that's gonna be on board with this or the lady, doesn't matter. And it always does help to try for a position that stimulates the G-spot inside the vagina as well as the clitoris on the outside at the same time. And another spoiler alert for the guys, all of those crazy Cirque du Soleil positions aren't very comfortable for the majority of women. There is nothing wrong with a woman being on top or missionary. If you start feeling that you are too stimulated and it just doesn't feel good, it's kind of uh, a little uncomfortable it's okay to take a little break. You're not gonna lose any of the progress you built up. And lastly, please, please know that it is okay if you don't end up experiencing multiple orgasms right away. At the very least, you're gonna find out a whole lot about your threshold for experiencing pleasure and how you can experience the pleasure you really want to experience each and every time. One more tip, try to stimulate the G-spot before vaginal intercourse. So using a finger, using a G-spot vibrator, and then following with vaginal intercourse, which is also somehow stimulating the clitoris on the outside, that is going to be a great time for everyone involved. So that's it, get out of your head, get into your body, experience the pleasure, be on board with each other as a team that's there for each other to take each other to the highest heights that you wanna experience. And I'm sure you're gonna have a great time and I'm sure that you will very likely begin experiencing multiple orgasms if that is something that you would like to experience. So if you thought this video was helpful, informative, or entertaining at all, please give it a thumbs up down there for me as that really does help me know which kind of content to keep producing for you. If you have any Q&A questions, comment them below. If you would like notifications of each time I post a video, please hit that little bell notification icon down there and you will be notified each time I upload. Please please subscribe to this channel. Subscribing really is where the support does come from. And at a thousand subscribers, I'm gonna be giving away a 100% individualized, totally custom nutrition and weight loss plan for your overall health and body image. So until next time, have super amounts of fun in your life and have super amounts of fun exploring the different areas of sexual pleasure for yourself, yourself and a partner, whatever, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.